welcome to Beyond Kicking and Punching. We've got a very special guest from Salt Lake City. And we're going to be talking about a lot of exciting things that we have going here in Salt Lake City with, within the Kempo community throughout the world, including the International Kaju Kempo Association, coordinating things going on with the, how do you pronounce the Yale? Unified Grand Masters Association of America. We'll take it a little bit slower so we can, <laughs> let's say, hear, listen to this now. Uh, Unified Grand Masters Association of America. Right, you know what? It's, it's coming really big because we had it a couple of years ago. We had a lot of people. But this year we had, we've getting a lot of good people in it. And if some of you have seen it going on FaceTime live, we've got a lot of great grand masters going on. Now, the topic that I want to talk about on this one here is that why are you doing this? So uh, my concept was this uh, a few years ago, I was thinking, that um, the state of the martial arts in general, um, that I think what we need to do is bring in some of the most uh, knowledgeable senior members of the uh, martial arts community into a seminar so that people who are training in the martial arts can get the best information possible at one place. And so I decided that what we could do is perhaps bring in not just one organization, but different styles and systems and people. And I searched out uh, and found some of the best people in the, United, in the United States to do that very thing. And of course, you are one of them. And I'm very appreciative that you come in and, and support this event. Uh, so we have, we have uh, representatives of you know, different systems like Ted Sumner from the Tracy Kempo systems. And you know, not every system that is called Kempo or even Kaja Kempo, I imagine, uh, kind of follow the same exact thing. Everybody's got their own way of, uh, of doing their martial arts. And so that's interesting because, you know, maybe Al DeCosto's uh, path that you've come from for many, many years is different than maybe Ted Sumner's or George Lynn or myself, Sam Mellis. Uh, and so there's so much to learn when you have this, these experiences and this um, vast knowledge that these masters have and the path that they come. And so it might be something uh, like a technique or a theory that, that you have thought about and, and it's something that maybe I haven't covered or somebody else has covered. And this is what's so important about this, this, uh, these events is that you have all this uh, information coming in that you will never learn unless you come to one of these organizations or these uh, seminars. You know what is really interesting? You know, if anybody's been following the martial arts and if anybody has seen into what the Kempo people has been doing ever since that thing came from the Far East into Hawaii and to California and spread out. It's been, in my opinion now, it's been the camp of people that had been the most innovative, innovative personalities because there's been creativity. It's not stagnant into one particular system. Being that Kempo is more eclectic and free flow, we have had the chance of the minds challenging the uh, the concept of really putting it out because i look at the ed parker system the traces system what some of the systems that come out of uh, out of the east coast or west coast or whatever and and if you take a look at it these uh, campus system in my opinion has been on the forefront of really developing some of the real life techniques that works do you agree uh, I agree too, uh, to a great extent. And you know, I had the opportunity, of course, of talking to uh, Mr. Edwin Parker, mm -hmm. uh, who was the most innovative person in Kempo system. And he said, you know, I do not want a traditional, a traditional kind of system, a traditionalized system. He says, I want people to be able to express and grow and go in different uh, or, uh, ways, uh, still staying with the fundamentals, ways of looking at the same thing and finding different ways of accomplishing the same thing within that system. And uh, what that has done is allowed people to uh, really grow and experience uh, different ways of doing, you know, basically maybe some of the same thing as, as the ending point, but these theories that they have come up with are very helpful to all systems and all people. They fit into every system. Remember that excitement come with subscribing down below, what? thumbs up and bell buttons all over the place, all right? 
because we got a lot of good information coming out and to keep you in tune of what we're doing you really got to subscribe to it i mean hey help us out here because we're in turn helping you out okay now grandmaster sam ellis has studied with a, a, a very great senior grandmaster by the name of tony martinez senior can you tell us more about your relationship with him yeah so i actually started with two different people well actually connected or students of tony martinez this I started in 1965, and uh, it was a few years uh, before I actually met Mr. Martinez, but I had heard so much about him. And, you know, one of the things he really excelled in, uh, he was a Golden Glove boxer, undefeated in his younger uh, uh, life. And he was, at, they wanted him to turn pro at that particular time. Uh, his wife, Linda, didn't really care for that. So somebody told him about uh, uh, Temple Glass and those Crenshaw was teaching and he went in there and he told me he says he says oh sam i went in there he says i was undefeated he says i won so many boxing matches really really easy so it was so easy for me to do that but he says when i walked in that kimball class uh mills had one of his uh beginning students he says i couldn't touch the guy he says that impressed me so much that uh as a matter of fact uh, mills told him he says i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hit you with my right hand and he even pointed that's where i'm gonna hit you at <laughs> And here Tony is thinking, you know, I'm the, I'm the best boxer. And he says, I couldn't stop him. He says, right then and there, I decided that's what I was going to do. He says, I stopped boxing. I got into to Kempo. And he says, I, I trained ever since. And what really impressed me about him is, is uh, uh, his training regimen and his uh, great thirst for knowledge. And, and that's what made him such a good instructor is because he was always seeking out and questioning, questioning if this worked or not. And he worked on it and, you know, it was proven to him that this is how you do it. This is how it works. Mm. And his drive was tremendous. And I always looked at him and looked up to him. And he was like, that guy doesn't quit. He just keeps going. It was inspirational for me. And, of course, when I first started taking from him, I thought he was hitting me three times or twice. And he was hitting me three times. He was just so fast that I, I didn't know. And I thought, how did he get this speed? And, and can I do it? Because see, my arms was way longer than his arms. And so it took me a while, but I, I figured out um, that I had to move a little bit differently. But it was his inspiration that gave me that drive to, to continue to train. Mm. You know, you've, you've been doing it you know, quite a few years with him. Um, and you, you are teaching classes now, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So where 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 are your classes, and how people how can people get in touch with you? Yeah. So what I did is I had a commercial school. I had 135 students at, at that time, uh, and uh, I'll tell you tell you it. I wasn't really satisfied with how I had to teach because when I was learning, it was called uh, kind of the blood guts uh, era, and you came up in that as well. And it was tough, and it was very regimented, and uh, um, it wasn't for, uh, you know, people who were shy and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you took a lot of punishment, but by doing so, you learned so much. And so when I was, had my commercial school, I just, I just didn't feel like I could teach the art like I wanted to. So I actually give that to Tony Sr. And I went back to my basement and in my basement, I have a thin piece of carpet uh, on concrete. And one of the reasons I want to teach like that is the fact that my students have to learn how to fall on a hard surface. And it's not, it's not you know, um, when you get in a street fight, uh, you're not going to have a nice soft mat to, to fall on. So uh, I wanted to teach more realistic tempo, uh, things that you could use to uh, defend yourself on the street, you know, basically. And that's, that's what I have done. I've thought out kind of the commercialism. And I've come back in there and I, I, I select students who are willing to take that responsibility on just as you and I did when we started mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the real deal. And that's what I've been trying to do for years and years. And I've developed in uh, systems that I learned from Parker. I see Mr. Parker do something way back in 1965 or 66, excuse me, that I realized that nobody else was moving like him. And, mm -hmm. and I couldn't figure it out for a long time. And once I figured that out, I thought, oh, this mm -hmm. is the movement system. Mm -hmm. in Kempo. And um, so that that is something that I have been working on for years and years. And I think um, it's mm -hmm. the benefits now are starting to come. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you recently uh, 
finish or, or is writing a book, right? I, I finished the book uh, a few years back. And what happened with that was basically um, I was flying to San Francisco. And when I got off the plane, the pilot who flew the plane came out to thank the people for flying. And it was one of my former students. Uh, this was right after 9-11. And so he says, I got to talk to you. I've been looking for you for a couple, you know, for a couple of years. It was almost two years by that time after 9-11. And he says, I need you to come do a self-defense program for, for SkyWest Airlines and a couple of other things. So I put together this program and uh, I did their videos for the TSA and FAA. And um, after that, I, I realized that, you know, maybe that the airlines may not spend a lot of money on that training for the. So I, I went there and I started to explain to him, you know, maybe if you teach him this, and, it, it, and this is up here, uh, awareness and, and so on and so forth, and how real time works compared to recorded time, and what is the relationship between them and things that are happening, and uh, how nothing in Earth is ever stagnant, it's not stopped. Everything is in constant motion. And if you start learning these concepts, then maybe you can keep yourself safe because you will be more aware than you ever have been. And oh, through this training, uh, you'll keep yourself safe. And I thought if their employees would learn this, maybe they won't have to learn self-defense because you know it takes a while to actually be proficient at self-defense. And uh, so this is more of a mental training. And a lot of the stuff in my book, no one talks about. I, Grandmaster Ted Summer said, hey, nobody talks about this. This is very, very important stuff. So that's how I came up uh, with that book, The American Counter-Terrorist. What's the title of the book? The American Counter-Terrorist. Counter-Terrorist. Counter-Terrorist, counter yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. So how can they get it? How can you get it? Yes. Uh, you basically have to get it from, from me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Because I self-published it. My, my thing was, and this shows me how busy or lazy I am, depends on how you look at it, uh, was that, that I was going to get it out there, let some people read it, get some feedback on it, and then go back and I finish see. it, and then we get it on Amazon and stuff like that. And something I might do in the future when I have a little more time. But right now, when we come to seminars or do seminars and stuff like that, this is where I actually just sell the book. And uh, I talked to people in theories. I have a guy that came in from North Carolina, mm -hmm. one of the guys that we met way back there, and he was very interested in some of the subjects in that. And Are you talking about Larry? Larry? Uh, no, it was uh, it was uh, Bill McLaughlin. Um, okay. And he actually bought seven books today. Mm -hmm. He's going to take them back to his uh, students, have the students read it, and then they're going to start oh, working that into their training. Because uh, you know, for a personal thing, um, uh, even if you're not a very physical person. Uh, if you understand this mental training and you get that training going out there, then you're going to start picking out trouble way before it gets to you. And if you can be aware and do that, then you can get yourself out of that situation uh, mm -hmm. to keep yourself safe. So uh, you want to give out your address, your telephone number, email address on how we can get in touch yeah. with you? So if they want, uh, want a copy of the book or get in touch with me, they can go to sam.ellis.08 at comcast.net mm -hmm. okay? and uh, they can just write me and I can send them a copy of the book or they can ask if they want to do a seminar and I've done seminars specifically just out of awareness without teaching any kind of martial arts or anything like that uh, so it's a mental awareness and preparedness uh, maybe a mental martial arts you want to call it you know? mm. so uh, I've done seminars especially you know groups of women and things like that that, that but I find women uh, more vulnerable because they have more day-to-day -day choices, uh, the chores they have to do. That's really interesting that you got that. Now, you already gave us a, a way for them to contact. Yeah. But in case you folks want to follow up on it, I'd like you folks to click on onto the, into the International Kaju Kimball Association dash IKA.com. For a lot of information that we are having. Also, make sure that you subscribe, press the button, and ring the bell, okay? Because this is going to connect right into Grandmaster Sam Hello. Ellis. I was <laughs> waiting for that to okay. come in. I have those moments. <laughs> and we're all going through the senior moments, okay? But uh, listen up, guys. 
the martial arts has really helped us to really build, develop self-confidence in all of this one right here. And as you can see, the program that he has is really building up with self-confidence and self-esteem. Self-esteem. And, 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 you know, gives people confidence enough that they know that they can do certain things, can take care of themselves. And you'll be able to, if you practice this stuff, and I, and I use driving as an analogy. When you're driving down the road, you practice this stuff. Mm. Pretty soon you start seeing things that's been there for 30 years that you have never recognized because your awareness starts to, right. to expand. It also teaches you how to control random thought. Random thought will distract you more than anything in the world. So it teaches you how to control the random thought. Uh, if you have any kind of task, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about martial arts, but I don't care if it's in your work or not. If you learn how to manage uh, that, where, where random thought does not interrupt you uh, and you can keep on task, you're going to get a lot more done. It's going to be a lot better. And in this particular case, it's going to keep you safe and out of trouble. You'll be able to go to a airport, which I did. It's in my book and uh, it'll teach you how to be aware and spot those people. That'll be a problem. You can start making your plan of how to exit or get out of the way. Awesome. You notice that what he said, I'm bringing it up because it fits into everything that we've been trying to tell you about the five phases of learning. OK, be aware, be first, be fast, hit hard, don't stop. And everything has, that he's saying is how to be successful. And he's taking up and great, taking it in more into more, more steady, talking about the awareness, talking about being first, being fast and all of that. That is what makes you a great martial artist. More so, it makes you a great person that has good personality, good character. Now, remember that there's a big difference between personality and character. Character building is what we've been building up. So I thank you very yeah. much for joining sure. us. Yeah. And, um, and next sure. year or so, yeah. we got that you know, the program that we're doing now. And keep tuning on it because we're going to be really promoting this one here to the association. And hopefully, you'll be able to see more of what Sam is getting across to the rest of the world. Pulling all the Grand Masters together, and it's really unified. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's Thank remarkable you so much. what you're doing. What you're doing here is fantastic. Oh. Nobody else is doing it like this, and, and this is great information for everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you subscribe into the International Kaju Campbell Association-IKA.com. Oh, and I also got my book, The Legacy, which I'm promoting over here. Oh, and his book. book. Yeah. And his book. As a matter of fact, that my book was, well, yeah. get it. I'll, I'll sign it for you. Take care, book. guys. Good book. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Check it out. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Keep it going, yeah.